Yo, what up, what up, what up? What's up, Angel? I hope you are having a blessed day. Hope you was able to watch the eclipse. Did you, well, were you, did you go outside? Did you look at the eclipse? Did you have some eclipse glasses? Um, how you been doing? What you been up to? You know what I'm saying? Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Engaging. All right. So I'm about to change clothes a little bit. Change clothes. We're going to get right. Now, I'm still... The book says out for delivery. Just got done crying. I got nothing for my family. We will get over it. Man, that's what I always remember. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have those conversations. You gotta get yeah. You gotta have those fights so you can get over it. You can get past it and through it. You get right on through it. So now that the fight's over with, and now it's just a matter of time before, you know what I'm saying? Um, Y'all gonna get over it. Words were said, things were done. But now that it's out, you can go back to having some fun. You know what I'm saying? But it'd be like that. Those are the ones that's worth arguing with. Some people is not worth arguing with. Family, sometimes that's just an argument you gotta have. So let me change real quick. As you see, we got Bailey and we got Crush. Crush is here. Crush is outside. Crush is outside. You know what I'm saying? He chilling. You know, I'm just saying distant from myself. You gotta distance yourself sometimes from my friends too. It's just too much drama. Say the drama for your mama. You know what I'm saying? It's too much. We gotta be like, yo, I gotta get away for a bit just to get back to my peace and sanity. Okay. So, I got my jacket on. We're gonna do cigar talk. We're gonna do cigar talk. Um, let me just change clothes real quick. Uh, we also brought this out, you know what I'm saying? My sixth book is called Graffiti Jungle. And so this is a tribute to my sixth book. Again, we're just waiting for that to come in the mail. We're just waiting for that to come in the mail. And uh, since I think this is gonna be a good topic of conversation, everybody been talking about it because J. Cole apologized to Kendrick. And I'm, on the I'm, on, I'm with the people who's talking about that's the wackiest shit you could ever do. You didn't, once you put some audio out, bro, niggas can screen record, it's out, it's done, it's up forever, bro. Like, how much you gonna delete it? It's no deleting that shit, bro. Like, yeah, he deleted it, and you can ask for people not this and the third, but niggas have that shit. It's gonna resurface again. Like, there's nothing, you can't take that shit back. It's all, you're, all, you're, you're gonna be known that you put out a diss track, and then you, there's so many words that you can just say about that, bro. Like, why would you apologize? You're supposed to stand 10 toes down. Stand on that shit, bro. If you if you felt like you wasn't going to stand third, and you know you knew he what you call it, because he titled it "Might Delete Later." He titled it "Might Delete Later," so you already knew he wasn't trying to stand up behind that jump. That's soft. That's too soft, bro. Like, because people like when you people who grew up in different time periods, bro. Like, and that's what, we we got to get into it. Like, if you grew up, if you listen to Nas, Jay Z, Tupac, Biggie. Like, when they were sitting there chatting, bro, they ain't take no diss back. I said what I said. First off, fuck your bitch and the clip. No, no. Whatever. He said, Tupac, listen to Tupac, hit him up. West side, when we ride, come equipped with. You claim to be a payer, but I fucked your bitch. First off. Fuck your bitch and the, something. He say, first off, fuck you something and the click you claim. West side, when we ride, come quit with them. You claim to be a player, but I fucked your bitch. Tupac and Biggie was going at it, bro. Tupac and Biggie was going at it. And there won't no, oh, I'm gonna take back what I said. Ain't it won't no, I'm gonna take back what I said. Look, you getting active. Um, yeah, forget all that, bro. So, we got cigar talk, bro. We got cigar talk and some mukbang. It's a mukbang. I was trying to save the cigar and the drinks for the book, 
but the book not here yet. So we just gonna keep on working. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna keep on working. But I just opened up the graffiti jungle. You see me? Here's the graffiti jungle. It's a mobile, a mobile t-shirt book business. So I got it's my suitcase. Inside my suitcase, this is the graffiti jungle. Um, I got my iPad so I can record and do some edits. Um, I got shirts with the project extinction design on it. Shirts. The Project Extinction design it. So it's a mobile t-shirt business everywhere I go. This is just a shirt I just came out of. I just came out of this shirt. Cause this right here, this is my work shirt. Project Extinction, Project Extinction, boom. This is my work shirt. Oh, I remember I gotta cut, I gotta mess up with these cuts again. Um, now also, I got each one of my books today. So here's my first book. Here's my fifth book. Um, here is my third and fourth book here and here, Art versus Artist Mamba Edition. And here are my first, uh, no, this is my second book. This is my second book. And then that's my first book with a different cover. So that's the Graffiti Jungle. And you see my dragon and he acting shy. There's Crush and Bailey and Bailey, Crush and Bailey. Uh, so let's just picture for the team. This is the dream team, baby. Crush, Bailey, and of course me, your chief, Jahara, leader of the Kim Dynasty and the Spiritual Bandits. Because we take our abundance, we don't ask for what's the life for the hours. And on today's episode of Cigar Talk Mukbang, we are going to be talking about who is the greatest rapper of all time. We will be talking about who's the greatest rapper of all time. So, we about to get set up. We're getting set up right now. I got my outfit on. Almost. I gotta put the jacket on. Gotta put the jacket on. That's tough. Watch this, hold up. That's tough. Damn, the graffiti jungle. And you see him on that jank. Doom, 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 doom. Huh. <laughs> Say my, don't dance, we just pull up our pants and huh, do the rock away. Can you feel me? Now lean back, uh-huh, now lean back. Look, he's trying to go. I gotta do a visual of me putting this jacket on too. Cause I, I really like that in the last video. Look, he is trying to go, boy. I put this nigga down and he will get gone. Um, but I'm about to take a picture of this real quick. I just think that's lit. And then we get back to this. All right. Just so you can see what we're working with. And it's like, bruh, I was doing a whole bunch of stuff and I was like, I got tired of waiting. So I was like, you know, while we got this sunlight out, well, I can still do, it was gonna be two episodes of Cigar Talk. While I'm waiting for my book to come, you know what I'm saying, we can just, well, well, we can get this one going. All right, so in our bag, remember we had left this out from the last live, we got, got candy, we got some gummy worms, and cigar, and we got a, we got a couple, we got a little sip, it's not, it's not much in here. We got a little sip, a little sip left. So let's get right. Let's lit up. Let's light up. Let's get lit up. No, I think we gotta put this in a certain area, which means I gotta face low key. I gotta face this one. So actually, what we're gonna do to post that? Bailey, move, bro. She be thinking the gummy, bro. She hit up that crinkling, that wrinkling. She think the gummy for her. All right, so we're gonna set up right here. Let me just put the phone right there. I'm gonna get right. Now I'm just trying to make sure that y'all can hear me. Um, can you hear me? Now lean back, uh-huh. All right. Cigar talk. We, on, we up, we up. Facts, you should be able to hear me. Facts. So 
I don't really got no way to swear. Uh, so I could do it from this angle, but if I'm not gonna be able to sit down, I might as well do it from somewhere I'm standing up at. Um, and I'm technically I need to face that way, but we'll put it over here. Just because I don't have nowhere to sit, it's like if I'm gonna stand and talk my shit, if I'm on my pool pit, um, then I need to show a little bit higher. So now the phone's here, now it's like I'm looking around, and where I'm gonna put it at. Now I could go over there, but that's across the water, and I got these, I got the Chelsea boots on, you, you feel me? Like, <laughs> I got the Chelsea boots on today, so I ain't crossing that water, I'm walking real light. I'm walking real light today. We ain't trying to get there. We are not trying. Okay, so now this is what I can do, right? I can figure, because I'm looking for a flat surface. So, since I have this, I can use this as a flat surface, and I can just put it up here. Put it right there. And then, put the phone up there. Put it on this side so that's the side that much more on it. You didn't want to fall forward. And again, since it wants to fall forward, I can use this is a director. I'm a one man band, baby. I'm a one man production company. I can take this. Just my creativity snapping on me. I'm going to take this, use this as a weight so that the phone stops trying to fall forward. So, let's put this right there. Now, now this is I'm doing that. Okay. We good. That's a branch. Hold up. Now, if you move this branch out the way. You know, if I don't really want that branch, I can go like this. But, uh oh, here comes that boost. Hey, baby, bro. bro. Cause she, she ain't got no regard. You know that, you know the Le Le LeBron James sound like no regard for human life. She would just run through and just knock something over. So I'm just trying to make sure I put this stuff in a decent space so she ain't like knock it over or something. All right, let me go ahead and get the Zippo lighter and then we good to go. Let's go, baby. Let's go, come on, please be the one. But I feel like it's not the one, I feel like this is the silver one. Yep, told you, this is the silver one. All right, so we're trying to go for the gold one. We're going for gold, baby, we're not going for silver. The second place is the first loser. If you're not first, you're last, Ricky Bobby. Alright, here, there it is. We're going for gold, baby. Cigar Talk Olympics. This is a podcast Olympics. Got the best podcast. Put pressure on these niggas, bro. Who got the best podcast out, bro? Stop playing, bro. <clears throat> Let's go. Alright. Let's go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Tangential Thoughts Chat Show. I'm your chief, Jahara, leader of the Kim Dynasty and Spiritual Bandits, because we take our abundance, we don't ask for what's so rightfully ours. And on today's episode of Cigar Talk, uh, we're going to be smoking the Devil's Hand. I've had it before. It's a decent brand. You know, I'm the man with the plan. I'm running all the land. Come on, man. All right, so 
got the cigar and of course please make sure you show some love to my pet dragon <laughs> my pet dragon crush and my best friend who's been with me through it all through the thick and the thin the ups and the down the ups and the falls whether i'm walking or crawl my dog my lion bailey all right we got Bailey and Crush in the graffiti jungle. We got Bailey and Crush in the graffiti jungle. Now, this, the aesthetics for here is too far. You know what I'm saying? If I say welcome to the graffiti jungle, I got that cow hide on. I got my cigar. Got my yard. Mm. Let's get it. Let's go to the cigar talk. So let's go ahead and get this Jane lit. Let's get this Jane lit. And today's topic, today's topic is who's the greatest rapper of them all? All right, we had to save that highlight. That was the intro. That was the intro. We can go back and edit some shit up. We can go back and edit some shit up. Uh, yeah, I'm not liking the flavor of this cigar. I'm not liking the flavor of it. Oh, I don't got my gloves. Ooh, it was almost perfect. It was almost perfect. It was just not worth it. All right, so today's talk... Today's conversation, I'm going, off the, I'm going off the fly, you know what I'm saying? So just forgive me. I'm going to try to keep track of everything, but I ain't writing nothing down. So a little bit of improv is going into this. So there I go, greatest rapper. Who is the greatest rapper? Hey, Bailey, back up. So... Let me just keep it. I got, I got my cigar top, my cigar holder, but I'm putting it down for right now. All right. Where do where does the conversation start, right? When you talk about the greatest rappers, where does the conversation start? Now, the greatest rappers aren't the first ones. Rap is only is rap is relatively young. I think they just celebrated 50 years of rap. So if they celebrated 50 years of rap, that means rap, hip hop, whatever you want to call it, was created in what? Mm, in the 80s? Cuz we're in 20. So go back 20 years. 20 more would be 80. So 70s, so 1974, if you wanna say, who's the greatest rapper, starting with the beginning, starts in the 1970s, 1974 up until 2024, rap is relatively young. Now, the greatest rappers, can a lot of people, if you sit here and say, well, let's take a step back here. Greatness, what is greatness? It's like, how do you define greatness? Now, the greatest of all time, that conversation happens, it doesn't matter what field we're talking about, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, music, rapping, sports, like swimming. So we just talked all about sports, so music. Um, the greatest of all time. You know who they don't talk about the greatest of all time? Well, I'm talking about, you can even say presidents, leaders, the greatest rulers of all time, the greatest leaders of all time. 
Yeah, who's the greatest person of all time? Th that'd be some, that's, cause that's when you started getting into religion a little bit. The greatest people of all time made, the greatest people, so greatness, let's get back, let's get down to greatness, okay? Greatness is gonna refer to impact, not popularity, it's impact. Who's had the greatest impact on whatever sport, whatever genre, or whatever topic it is, who's had the greatest impact? And so like talking about who's the greatest person uh, who's ever been, who's ever lived, it's like, well, what person had the greatest impact of them all? Now, those are the people that you have religions based off uh, those prophets, the prophecies. So the prophets, who's the greatest prophet of them all? That depends, you know what I'm saying? Because who's gonna have the greatest following, the greatest religion? Who made people believe? Who, had, who has the most believers, the most conversions? All right, now. Our definition for greatness is going to be impact, all right? Who's had the greatest impact? Now, when we sit there and talk about it, it's not the first. Because you can't sit here and say somebody from the beginning of rap, because you don't know who's... You, right now, you can ask almost anybody who listens and appreciates rap music, who started rap music? They couldn't tell you. We couldn't tell you number that. We might be able to name some people from, from back in the day. We can name some, let me see if I can try to name a rapper from back in the day. And we talking about before the 90s. Mm. 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 Hopefully, I don't know. I don't know what year Slick Rick came in. Slick Rick and them, Slick Rick in the game. But they got to claim the fame. Now. Greatness is going to refer to impact, so we're not. We're, so we're technically we're not going to go to any, say anybody in the beginning because you can't name somebody who started who was at the beginning of hip hop. So we're just not going to. We're just not going to. We're just not going to. We're just going to skip over that part anyway. Who started hip hop? Who created it? Who invented it? We're going to skip over those people, like because they, they're not part of the conversation. They're generally not part of the conversation because. When also when you talk about somebody who has the greatness and the impact, it's about over time as well. Over time, the impact and the greatness either becomes greater or it lessens. People stop, they phase out and they stop talking about you. So, where does the greatness conversation start? The great conversation starts with The famous rival, the two, the two. And now it's somebody who you gonna say first? But you know who I'm talking about. If I say, we're gonna start the conversation off with these two, who are you, who am I thinking about? Who am I referencing? You know exactly who I'm talking about, you know exactly who I'm referencing. The furthest that you probably even wanna go back with hip hop and rap, to talk about the greatest, is going to be so if we start the conversation there that means we're, we start off in the 90s we're going to start off in late 80s 90s with these two rappers now from there where does it go who takes over the scene what comes out of this now this third rapper, now I, no, I haven't said any names. Haven't said any names just yet. But the third rapper is gonna be in the midst of those, but you'll never put this third rapper above those first two. When it comes down to it, yeah, I'm really not liking this cigar today, but it's okay. Mm. When it comes down to it, you'll start the conversation with these first two. In the midst of the first two is this third rapper, but but by me automatically saying that, this third rapper has never ran the game. Even when these two rappers went out, this nigga has never ran the game. He has a claim to fame, but he thought if you thought if you talk, take this person out, take this person out, he would run this shit, he still wasn't running this shit. So, because you, and now, and yes, 
I, I have a bit of a bias, but we're gonna we're, we're trying to have an unbiased conversation, but we're sitting here talking. So now, greatest rapper of all time. Now I said, if I say we start, you could start off with these two, you know exactly which two I'm talking about. If I say that you gotta mention this third guy, that means that automatically tells you he ain't up there with the first two, but after them first two, who took the fuck over? And who's still relevant today? So that means as far as impact, we're talking about impact and greatness and putting people to fuck on and still and still relevant this day. Little Wayne. And we can I can I can end the conversation right here. I can end the conversation right here. But Lil Wayne is the greatest rapper of all time. Lil Wayne is the greatest rapper of all time. When it comes down to the great the go the greatest of all time. Who are you gonna mention first? There's two people that's gonna that that kind of go back and forth, and people just don't know who better than who. And then and then that, and then that comes down to preference. And I'll say this: This is how we're gonna go about this shit. I'm gonna say Wayne is number one. Wayne is number one. Talking about the greatest rappers of all time. Wayne is number one. Now. From there, who's number two? Who is number two? Hey, Beck, see, this is what the fuck I'm talking about, bro. She has no regard for shit. I gotta stand over here. Back up, man, please. Please, please. Bailey, please, please, please. So, after Wayne, who's in the number two spot? Standing in number two is Kanye. Wayne is number one, Kanye is number two. Now, Talking about this, this is almost, this is when you're getting down to the Kobe's and Jordans and shit, right? The Kobe, Jordan, LeBron type of debate. This is that, this is that type of shit. And the reason I say this is because Kanye comes after Jay-Z. Jay-Z technically kind of put Kanye on, or like, like even in Kanye's documentary, you can tell how Jay-Z had an impact on him. They even had a whole album together, Watch the Throne. Now, the reason I'm sitting here saying Jay-Z is not going to be number one. He's not going to be number two. He can't because why, why can't Jay-Z be number one? I already just told you because at the time in the 90s, who'd you going to say who will run this shit is either Biggie or Tupac. And Jay-Z just in the midst. If you're not going to put Jay-Z over Biggie and Tupac, that means boom. Now, the, and sometimes the difference between now for me, when I say rappers, I'll, I'll put Biggie over Pac when it comes down to rapping. Like, this is somebody, this is what somebody told me, said one time, and Tupac was on some, somebody said, Tupac is more of a poet than a than a rapper. When you listen to Biggie shit, because, and now, and this is just my opinions, I, I listen to rap and hip hop and shit, I listen to music for entertainment purposes. You know what I'm saying? I don't be looking for shit about no deeper, no deeper message. I don't care about that shit. You know what I'm saying? If I want a deeper message, and I want to go read some shit, I'll read a fucking book, and, and mind you, I've, I've written six books. So I read. I'll read a book if I want some information, if I want to go dig deeper into some shit, I want to learn about some shit, or I'll watch a documentary. There's movies. There's other shit that I look for that I can find some information from. But music is not where I look for information. Music is for entertainment purposes. And Biggie got some entertaining music. Biggie got some music to talk about. He just want to... Uh, he be talking about fucking um, some famous bitches, some famous pretty bitches. He be like, I'm just saying, 
he's not, I'm playing. I'm just saying. But he, uh, dreams of having a fucking a rich bitch or something like that. Dream, he, stop drinking the water, the creek water. He'd be like, dreams of fucking a rich bitch or something like that. I'm just playing. I'm just saying. He, like, his shit is actually funny, bro. And he be telling stories and this shit. Like, when it comes down to entertainment, Biggie will tell a story about r rapping and fucking bitches and coming and to come up in this and the third boom, boom, boom. And he really put his life into this shit. And it's, it's just more entertaining now. So Pop, Pop got some hits. He got some rap type of hits. He got Now, and, and, and so then another, like, a Tupac has an edge when it comes down to, like, diversity type shit. You know what I'm saying? Because Tupac does have some hit him up. He got hit him up. And at the same time, he got, um, Brenda got a baby. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he has some around the way type of shit. And uh, Lady, the mama song. You know what I'm saying? So, Pot has some, Pot has some hits. And he got diversity and shit. But Biggie is more, Biggie is in the lane of, when I talk about entertainment purposes, Biggie had, I'm gonna put Biggie over Pop when it comes to rap, bro. When it comes to rapping and entertainment, I think Biggie is more of like of a rapper than a than Pac is. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about rappers. Again, the 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 and this is my opinion, but when they said Tupac is more of a poet than a rapper, I understood that shit. I'm like, you know what? That shit kind of is true. But rap and poetry, same things, just doing over beat to a tempo and all this other shit. Anyway, so I'm putting Wayne at number one. Putting Kanye at number two. Now, I got, I, because a lot of people can, you know what I'm saying, debate this about how we're gonna, I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put some more evidence on why Wayne is number one, but why am I putting Kanye at number two? Now, because you also see how Kanye comes behind Jay Z and how much of an influence Jay Z had, an influence Jay Z has on Kanye. But like I said, there was never a time in which you looked at Jay Z and said, he running shit. There was never a time that we ever said that. It has always been some competition, right? Kanye, there are errors. When you talk about Kanye, Kanye has errors. He got the 808s and heartbreaks. When people talk about Kanye and the different the music and shit, he has some shit that changes the course and the sound of hip hop and things like that afterwards. And I can't sit here and say that Jay-Z, yes, he, yes, he has had an impact. We're gonna rank him, but he is not one or two. And he is not three or four, all right? So, Jay-Z is going to be not, Jay-Z is not in the top three or top four. Now, Kanye, so we got Wayne at number one, Kanye at number two. The reason I say Kanye at number two, again, is because he has errors. 808s and heartbreaks. You got dark twisted fantasy. You got certain shit that when it hit, it changed the course of how people was making music. I cannot look at Jay-Z and say people were trying to replicate and copy him, his flow, his style. Nothing that now, because you but and I'm not saying I'm gonna say I'm talking about a lot of people. But when I talk about when you talk about 808s and heartbreaks, that changed a lot of sound. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing here. Really changing who you putting people on after this and shit. You can name a lot more music references to Kanye than you can Jay-Z. That's or sound references. Now, yes, people will have Jay-Z got the uh like Cassidy. Cassidy said Jay-Z got a, he got he had a hot line that turned into a hot song. I'm a hustler. I'm a, I'm a hustler, homie. Go on dust your shoulders off. Ladies is pimps too. Go on, but you know what I'm saying? He got some shit. But it don't change the course of history on some shit like now, cause you got he got the blueprint and you know what I'm saying and this ain't third. But Jay, Jay Z, I respect this nigga, I respect this nigga, but he's not in the top one. He's not in the top four, like I just said. Cause you're gonna put Pac and Biggie over Jay Z. You're gonna put Pac and Biggie over Jay Z. And I'm putting Kanye, cause if you just focus on the '90s and you say rapper, you're gonna say Pac and Biggie. And you not and you gonna say Jay Z's somewhere in there, right? That means he's he wasn't running shit. And then, um, so that's why I say he's not he not if he's behind Pac and Biggie, he's not in the top four. Jay Z is not in the top four. But I have to because certain people that you gotta respect. 
even on some Le LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan debate, it's like, if you don't like any one of them niggas, there's some shit that you just got to respect. You know what I'm saying? So Jay-Z, especially come up in the time that he came up in, before social media, hustling out your car, because people, people can't even wrap their heads around that. Like, how you get this big, bro, hustling and selling mixes out the back of your car and shit? Like, he wasn't the first one, but I'm just saying. Like, Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks wasn't the first bitch to sit in the back of the, to take a stand and say, I'm going to sit on the right here on this bus. I'm not going to move. But her shit, you know what I'm saying? It's like, she take off. She blow up. So boom. Let's go. So, Wayne at number one, Kanye at number two. Now, if you want to, I can say we can tie Big and Pop. Big and Pop can be a tie. Now, if that's three, now who's in that fourth spot? If Big and Pop tie for number three, who's in the fourth spot? Now, in the fourth spot is when you're gonna start, cause, cause I even like even my, my thumbnail for today, I all I did was Google Wayne Drink and Kanye. I Google Wayne Drink and Kanye. And what do you see? You gonna see a picture of Wayne Drake and Kanye and Eminem. I had to put myself over uh, in front of Eminem. I put my, I had to crop it out. I had to edit the picture, so I'm over top of Eminem. But now Eminem got some shit, and it's like again, that's just a nigga that you just gotta respect. Get out the race, and you, even though he white, and he from Detroit, and it's that third white boy putting in for the shit. He got some shit that you just gotta respect. So Eminem, Jay Z, now because now this now, so. If we're going to say Wayne number one, Kanye number two, three, three is a tie for Pac and Big, four. Four. Now, some pe now, now at four, you can start to open up. Once you talk about Wayne, Kanye, Biggie, and Pac, now you can start to open up. Because Jay-Z can start to come up in the conversation now. Jay-Z can start to come up in a conversation. But Drake, and it's like, because Drake is newer, but you know for a fact, Drake just won Artist of the Decade. From 2010 to 2020, Drake had, was the Artist of the Decade. Again, there have been times when you got to talk about who running shit. Jay-Z has never been, there's no time period when you say, Jay-Z you took over from here to here. Never. You have never, you will never say, Jay-Z was running everything from this year to this year. You can't even name one year where Jay-Z was running shit. So Jay-Z is not, yeah, that's the thing. But for Drake, you can say, Drake was running shit from here to here. I don't care. I haven't liked any of Drake's new music, but that nigga from 2010 to 2020, that nigga won Artist of the Decade. You can say, you can look at Drake and say, that nigga was running shit. When we had controller, it's like you can name certain shit and you can and niggas know where they were at and what the fuck they were doing. Controller, that summer, I think that was summer 2016. Niggas, niggas look back at 2016, niggas still stuck in that time. 2016, you got what a time to be alive. Now mentioning one time, what a time to be alive, you got to start Drake start creeping in. I mean, I mean future. Cause then they had the whole uh what that what song, what album did they have? Um, hmm. uh, it's the life is good. Life is good. Drake and future. And that was after. All right, bro. If you can sit here and say that Drake has an era and Jay-Z does not have an era, bro, that he was running shit. That puts Drake where? Drake is at number four. Wayne is at one. Kanye is at two. Pac and Big, and Pac and Big is off some respect type shit, but Pac and Big is, is tied at three. Four is Drake. Because you got to look at, you look at who was running shit. Pass the torch, pass the torch. After pa we start the conversation with Pac and Big, who does the torch pass to? Wayne. The, after, after Pac and Big, who takes over from the 9-9 to the 2000? Wayne. Fire, man. F f fire, man. Fire, man. Wayne. And from 2000 until he start putting other niggas on. And now, when you go to the drought, bro, you got Future talking about thought it was a drought. Who where did the drought start at, bitch? The drought one, two, three, four. That's Wayne. Mixtape shit. You listen to Wayne mixtape? Um, He said, I just signed a bitch named Nicki Minaj. Like, he, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he shouting her out. He shout out Nicki Minaj out on his on the drought three. 
And I just signed, I'm trying to figure out how I, I'm, a, I'm still spitting like a retard. And these niggas soft, they should be, <laughs> they should be rapping in leotards. Nigga, we in charge. Baby put me in charge. And I'm just murdering niggas free of charge. You did? Holla back, I see you, Sarge. I'm so motherfucking high, I can eat a star. Yeah, yeah, let me upgrade you. I may not be a model, but I can front page you. It seems, uh, I know I'm, excuse my behavior. Let me just taste you, we can fuck later. Sitting in the coop, looking like a racer. Top pill back like the skin of a potato. Seat way back, listen to Anita Baker. Riding by myself, smoking weed by the acre. How they go gator, ain't nobody greater. Leave with some bullet holes the size of craters. You ain't heard the latest. Weezy is the greatest. Battle anybody, nigga, fucking with your favorite. It's a new game, and I'm the coach like Avery. I gotta, I gotta remember how this shit start, bro. How does this shit start? Let me. Just signed a bitch named Mickey Minaj. Hear me? I'm still spitting like a retard. Bro. Anyway. Cause that's the Mick take shit. This ain't even on the album shit. Cause you start talking about the Carter. The Carter. One, two, and you know what I'm saying? And keep going. Cause then you got Young Thug. And Young Thug gonna drop off with the what? The barter. You know what I'm saying? If you want to talk about, cause greatness, I said we're gonna talk about greatness, is it refers to impact, bro. It refers to impact. One, Wayne. Two, Kanye. Top of three, Pac and Big on some OG shit. Number four is Drake. Because Drake has an error. Jay-Z does not have an error. He was running shit. Now. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? We just talked about the top. If four is Drake, five, because it's the top five, bro. We'll at least start off with the top five, the greatest rappers of all time, bro. Now, again, you start to open this shit up because now on some respect type shit, you talk about Nas. Nah, because because the reason I bring up Nas, because because the reason I sparked this shit, and I don't even want to mention their names. I don't even want to. Hey, babe. I only want to mention their names because this nigga put out an apology. He dropped a mixtape and then dropped an apology. Bitch, what the fuck? That's like, cause you had you had Pop Big beefing. You got you got NWA. You got Ice Cube. You got Snoop Dogg. These some heavy hitters too. These some heavy hitters too. Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg. Then um, even when Drake had the whole beef with. Now, Drake done had two beefs. Hold up. Drake had a little... Who did he actually... Oh, me, me. Oh, my fucking God. We're going back to back. Now, I don't care. You can talk about Drake this and that. He being soft. He being some fake hood. I don't care. What the fuck you about to say? Drake got back to back. That nigga had a clap back against Meek Mill. And you know what I'm saying? He dropped his bars. And niggas was doing saying what? Going back to back. And... But Drake... I mean, Meek had the one shit talking about Twitter fingers. And this and that there. Boom, boom, boom. We might just get here with Dorico. Extortion charges. Cause this was crazy because Meek and Drake had a whole song together called Rico. And then for them to be going back and forth and beefing and shit. But you know what they did? They stood 10 toes down. They dropped their fucking mixtapes and they didn't they didn't apologize about the shit. Yeah, even Kanye and Drake, they going back and forth. Then nah, you know there's conspiracy. They be like, Drake fuck Kim. But they still had a, they did a whole concert together. So, after Drake, now, because people can really sit there and try to argue with you about Nas, Eminem, any of the old times, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, all of them old niggas. Um, so, right there, at number five, I don't care, you can open it up for debate. You can talk about Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, NWA, Easy e you can talk about uh, any, uh, any other rapper. Oh, you got Dr. Dre. You got some. You got some. You got some people who, who you know, what I'm saying some, some respect type shit. Number five, boom. But I'm gonna defend this top four. I'm gonna defend the top four because that's that's some shit, right? So, hey Bailey, 
to, she tried to jump down and run down here and knock everything over. Uh, with Drake though, it's some shit, right? Now, the reason I say this, Wayne literally, bro, literally. You gotta sit there and talk about, well, when does Lil Wayne reign in? Like, when did Wayne ever like fall off? You know what I'm saying? When did he stop running shit? That's the, that you gotta actually think about that, right? You gotta think about that. So Wayne, the whole, the 2000s, bro, that's Wayne's era. It was so hard, bro. And I just remember, cause I remember being a kid and, and you know what I'm saying, just listening to the radio. Bro, it was hard for them not to play a song that Wayne wasn't featured in. Either it, like when you listen to the radio back in the 2000s, either it was Lil Wayne's song or Lil Wayne was on the hook or Lil Wayne had a verse. Every fucking song, bro. They would go from one song to the next and Lil Wayne was either on a verse or a hook or it was his song. He ran it. You can't say that about too many people, bro. You cannot say that. And now... The reason, because you got to talk about it's uh, the greatness and impact. Greatness and impact. I'm trying to make sure I can stand it. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Greatness and impact. Who comes, who does Lil Wayne put on? Lil Wayne puts on Nicki Minaj and Drake. And you respect them, and you know for a fact you got Barbies out here, you got the Barbs, and you know that Drake had Drake was running shit when he had, and it's like, and you gotta respect this nigga because it's like this nigga had who? Drake had Rihanna, Drake had SZA, Drake will hop on a feature with Summer Walker. Drake Drake can just still hop on a feature on some slight shit, and you know what I'm saying? You know that impact. So it's like. Lil Wayne put on Nicki Minaj and Drake. Because also, at this number, this five spot, when you open up that number five spot, and you talk about female rappers too, like, I think it's some respect got to be put on Lil Kim name. Now, she had a crazy, she had a crazy fall. I'm not sure how that joint really went. Um, the whole skin changing colors and the body transformations. I don't know. But little little Kim, mm. I think the name of the movie is called Guns and Roses. I think there's a movie called Guns and Roses. I think it had little Kim in it. Hey, back up, Bailey. But niggas had a crush on little Kim. <laughs> the way that the way that Megan Thee Stallion rap, the way that uh, any all, all these freaky rappers, Megan Thee Stallion. Uh, the city girls, um, yeah, I guess you can kind of you not know, Nikki, not nah, Nikki. Nikki got some bars, but she'll be she'll be on no freak shit too heavy. Cardi B, little Kim was that bro, little Kim, that magic stick, ow, the magic stick. I know if I can hit once, I can hit twice. Little little Kim was on some shit like, I don't know. She she like she'll neck you up in the in the back in the in the telly. I don't know. Deep throat and deep throat, whatever. Lil' Kim was that bitch, bro. Lil' Kim was that bitch. You can't deny that shit. Lil' Kim was that bitch. I used to have a crush on Lil' Kim. And I ain't ashamed to admit that shit. Back in the day, Lil' Kim was on her shit, bro. She comes out of like OG female rappers, Lil' Kim. Yeah, you can talk about MC Light, Queen Latifah. But that's that positivity shit. Queen Latifah's on some positivity. U N I T Y. It's about unity and all that stuff, but I, ain't, I don't play hearing that song. Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim got some songs that you want to hear. Welcome to Bed Star. Little Kim, do or die. She from New York. Lil' Kim held her down. Um. So I can get I can I can give you a solid top four. Cause Lil Wayne put Nicki Minaj and Drake on. So you gotta kinda almost low-key attribute some of their success a lot of their success to him and them niggas would do the same too little kim i mean Nicki minaj and drake will say you know they they're gonna and i don't know if drake fuck one of wayne's bitches but 
they Wayne. Anybody is gonna put. They gonna talk about. They just giving homage to Wayne, bro. They gonna give homage to Wayne. Now, the only time, the only person I would respect if Wayne. Whoever Wayne's inspiration is. Now, that's something that I got to kind of look into. Now, Wayne is one of my greatest inspirations. But Wayne, bro, when I say mixtape vibes, when I say, it doesn't care you talking about mixtapes or albums, bro. Lil Wayne had this shit. Like, I'm in the, this, I'm in the jank, right? When you talk about somebody taking over a song, I'm in the jank, I'm listening to the beat, bro. And I don't even, I'm like, yo, I don't even know whose song this is. I'm like, all I know is Wayne version of this song. That's how... That's how influential he is to me. You know what I'm saying? I can listen to a song and I don't know the words to that song. All I know is Lil Wayne version. So, um, that's why I'm putting Wayne right there. Now, Kanye is like on some respect type shit. Kanye, and even on talking about diversity. Now, Wayne also has this whole, because Nicki Minaj does it too. Wayne has the whole rock star. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna appeal to a a, a a a wider crowd, when Wayne was doing that skateboard shit, and when Wayne said, "Teach me how to love," I didn't really care for that, but that was him opening up to a wider crowd. That's when you see Nicki Minaj turn into the Barbie, and she give her shit. And she got to appeal to the another crowd. You know what I'm saying? And so, but you see, she follows that blueprint. She followed that blueprint from Wayne. Uh, now, because Kanye, I was going to mention how Kanye has, Kanye, when we talk about diversity, bro, and classics and hits and stuff, Kanye has some, the, the, the Jesus, you got, you got, you go back to the Jesus walks, and he got some crazy bars, bro. Kanye was on some shit. What'd he say? I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven. When I woke up, I spent that on a necklace. That's, the thing was like, damn, what the fuck? I'm on TV talking like this, just, just you and me. He said something, something, something. And what I do, act more stupidly. Like, bro, he got some shit and he be talking this shit. And so, and he's very controversial, but that just lets you know, like, where he at with this shit, bro, mentally. Because you got to talk about impact. Because impact, we're talking about greatness and impact. And so, outside, even outside of rap, though, you it's not even up for debate. You know how influential Kanye is when it comes to clothes and fashion. And it was so crazy that the shoe game, the whole shoe game fell off. They stopped making Yeezys. And you see, like, this one man, as much as they tried to take out Kanye, bro, Adidas then does what? They tried to drop Yeezys without his name on it. The shit failed. And now they just said, fuck it. We're going to take all these shit back again. So they stopped selling them shits. They put shits up, thought they was going to do something, and still flopped. And that's the shoe shit. And you know what he comes down when it comes down to the clothes, and they're coming there. But, but like I just said earlier, bro, he he made a million off of his shoes of off twenty dollars shoes, and before that, he daggone did it with the uh, he did it with the he he sold these 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 sock shoes for two hundred dollars, came back again, dropped the price to twenty dollars, and still made over a million dollars. That should tell you some shit about his influence, bro, and. Now, mind you, I have not listened to the carnival, the new shit. I ain't listened to it. I haven't heard not one song that I even thought was going to be remotely, you know what I'm saying, listenable. Now, uh, but is you cannot dispute his greatness. You cannot dispute his greatness. And because I wanted to mention Kanye's diversity on some. He's, he's done what? He's approached gospel. Has the whole Jesus is king. And you can find some shits off that that you're going to like. He, like Donda, when we talk about some influential shit, some shit that people have never done. Here's the importance of Donda. All you ever see is the finished product. Any artist, rapper, singer, whatever, all they show you is the finished product. Here's my songs. Here's my, boom, right? They don't show you what, hey, this is what the song sounded like before. When he did Donda and did the listening parties, he said, Hey, y'all, I'm working on an album. I'm just showing you what the album might sound like. You come back to the next listening party, you're like, damn, who's on it now? 
you took off Jay-Z and put this person. You took off this person and put that person. This one sounds different. He brought you into the workings. He didn't show you the finished product of an album. He showed you how an album changes over time. Like, yeah, it was going to be this person. I had to make some decisions. I had to cut this person off, put this person on. And the song sound better. I had to go with a different vibe, a different mood, a different message. That's why Donda was so fucking lit. And then if you just open up your mind on some abundance type of shit, this is one of the things he was going with when he had the... Now, I still want a stem player. And I didn't know what the importance of the stem player was, right? But because but I used to be on some shit like... One of my ideas, bro, was sometimes I don't like listening to a whole song. I like this person's verse. I don't want to listen to the beginning. This and that. I want to listen to, like... What's that song? Turn your click up, dog. Turn them up. Turn your bitch up, dog. I turn on my bitch because she bad. Hmm. I just want to listen to future shit. I don't care about Quavo verse. I don't care about this and the third. So what I do, I post a music video and I just want to hear future part. You know what I'm saying? So, but when Kanye dropped the stem player, that's what he did. It's on some shit. You can make this song like, you like, I don't like this part of the song. I wish it, I could turn this part down, turn the vocals up, take the drums out, do this and this. So you can remix a whole song in your pocket. That's what he gave you uh, the ability to do with the stem player. And then it was on some shit. When the stem player two dropped out, on the stem player two, he said, here's Donda two. You can only listen to this song if you get the stem player and this and the third, boom, boom, boom. Now, if he ever decided to update the, if he ever decided to update the album, all he would do is just go back in and just upload some more songs. So what does that make it? That made it an, a living, this album never ends type of thing. All this album do is gonna do is change. And how do I relate to that? It's like on Amazon, right? I publish books. I'm waiting for my sixth book to come now. But all I got to do, if I want to update my book, if I want to make the book longer, shorter, take something out, all I got to do is re-upload a PDF and publish it again. That's what he was doing with the album. He was like, yo, all I got to do is upload it again, republish it again. And this album becomes breathing. It becomes living. It gets bigger. It can get shorter. It's like I can edit my album on the fly. And, we ain't, and instead of dropping new music, I'm just, I'm just updating my album. That's some shit. That was some shit. So like, that's why when I'm working on my YouTube shit, I got my music video playlist. I got my remixes and shit. It's like, I don't, all I gotta do is update. I, I, I'm starting off with my freestyles and stuff, right? So I start off with my freestyles. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just playing. I'm just saying. I start off with my freestyles. I freestyle over this beat. People are like, uh, you need to do this and you do that. I freestyle over it again. It's a living, breathing album. That's why I got my YouTube playlist. So you can see over time, like, damn, this nigga got better. This nigga got better with the editing. He got better with the rapping. He got better with the acting. I got all my playlists so you can see where I'm at and then see, like, over time, damn, this shit got better. The editing got better. The acting got better. The rapping got better. All this shit got better. Better than better. That's cheddar. We wetter. Like, it's like the black mafia boss got a vendetta. Anything I give my attention to turns better. It's like the black mafia boss got a vendetta. I'm a caveman. I've been whipping this shit. Call me Fred Flintstone. I'm a caveman. Of course, I built my house out of sticks. I'm an Indian. I'm still smoking cheese out the house. I'm a king, man. I run everything from the north to the south. I'm talking all hands on deck like I'm the captain of my ship. I'm talking all hands on deck like I'm a slave at the bottom of a slave ship. If it only get better, what's better than this? Starting to reminisce, living in bliss about a time when I thought I was happy about a time before things got sappy. I'm out of time. Things start to happen. I'm out of time. I have, a, I have no reaction. Because what you do don't change the motion of no ocean. You don't compare a ripple to a wave unless you're the size of an ant then that ripple gonna feel like a wave. What I'm saying is we two different sizes. I'm a champion, you play for silly prizes. Only get better, bro. Better than better than better than this. You can't Wu-Tang better than me. You can't Wu-Tang better than me. Better than better than better than me. So. Mm, I like this shit to back the fuck up. I like this shit back the fuck up. So, there are just so many. Lil Wayne's impact is just too great. There's not too many, even when you talk about collaborations, who doesn't, it's like, who has a, who has a song with Lil Wayne on it? So that lets you know, it's talking about impact and greatness. How many people has a feature with Lil Wayne? And there's so many songs. And if he ain't got a feature with him, he probably rocked over one of their beats. 
He probably rapped over one of their beats. <clears throat> so, shorty won the fuck. Started in the club and the rest were like this. I gave her neck a kiss. She kissed. She gave my neck a kiss back. And we can do it like a stack. We can do it like a G. Bruh, she got too many songs, bro. I'm talking about, I'm listening to the song, crying out for me. What do you say? So I met this shorty the other day. I got her number. Called her up like, what you doing? She say, nothing. I say, what's good? She say, not much. I say, what's up? She say, what's up? Oh, she say, guess what? I say, no. So I met this shorty the other day. I got her number. Called her up like, what you doing? She say, nothing. I say, what's up? She say, not much. I say, guess what? She say, what's up? I say, I think we should hook up. She say, uh. I say what? She say but. I say but. Why you stuck? She say fuck. I say who? She say not you. I said then who? She said you know. I know what? You know who? I said you do. I said I do, but I really don't, cause it's you that I really want, and we can do what you really want. Go be grown. If he ain't gonna treat you right, then I ain't gonna treat you wrong. That's my word. She heard so many lies. She don't know what's true or not. Shorty like a valet service. I swear she been through a lot. But I put a car in park and never let her cry alone. I listen to a heartbeat because it plays my favorite song. That's some poetic, deep type shit. You can be my judge, baby. And I'll do life. Give me life. That's when he went over promise with Sierra. He took, now Sierra's on some shit to him. Just like when you talk about rappers, bro. Cause it's like, you got rappers and you got artists. Cause you got, cause the reason I'm saying this shit, cause you gotta start talking about like Chris Brown. I'm not a rapper. I'm just a content creator, but you really a hater. So Chris Brown, All right, I'm gonna use this lighter then. Since that's what it wanted to come out. Cause Chris Brown be rapping and shit. But you're not gonna call Chris Brown a rapper. But Chris Brown is a great artist. So I guess when we gonna talk, Chris, we're gonna save Chris Brown for another a discussion. Chris Brown's gonna be up there with Usher. And hey, bro, back, back up, back up, back up. You're dirty. Oh. So, we got Wayne, Kanye, Big and Pop, Drake. Now, I guess I got to touch base on, I got to touch base on Big and Pop. Now, like I told you, now, I don't, because we talk, because again, greatness is impact. Now, Biggie and Pop, so many people are gonna reference Biggie and Pac, right? So many people are gonna reference Biggie and Pac as far as influence, who put people on, who want people to start rapping and shit. I think Wayne will even, Wayne even say, next time you mention Pop, Biggie and Jay-Z, don't, don't forget to mention Wheezy Baby. Hey, Mr. Carter, hello, tell me where you been. Shit, you know. I got spring hating on me cause I ain't never sprung. Got some hating on me because I'm hotter than the sun. Got winter hating on me because I'm colder than y'all. And I would never, I would never, I would never fall. I'm being hated by the seasons. So fuck y'all for hating for no reason. What did he say? He said something, something about no legs, a paraplegic. Niggas was Googling the word paraplegic. What, what the fuck is a paraplegic? Then you figure out, you had to Google that shit to figure out what the fuck that mean. Like, damn, that shit mean he ain't got no, that nigga with no legs. <laughs> Wayne used to get on the song, bro. This shit gotta be analyzed. Now, somebody even had a, 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 a poet. She even said, why aren't we analyzing Wayne for this lyricism, bro? In the English class? In English class, when you talk about some poetry and the third, 
you got to analyze Wayne's bars, bro. You got to analyze this shit. Like, these can help people be better poets in poetry class and English class, bro. This nigga would get on some shit, bro. What else I was about to say? Because there's another song that just came to mind. Oh, let the beat build. This nigga used to end the songs, bro. It's shit that you didn't pay attention to. And then you like, after this nigga, Lil Wayne has a song called Let the Beat Build, bitch. And that's how you let the beat build, bitch. And what you started to understand was, damn, I didn't, like, before that song, I didn't realize, you just listen to the music, right? But you don't realize that a song, it, the beat is building up. The beat start off one way, and then they add in this, and then they add in this, and then they add in this. And that's how you let the beat build, bitch. I'm trying to see if I can remember a bar off of that shit. Um, Cause you be I'm counting dirty money. <clears throat> I got damn, I gotta catch the beat. If I can remember that shit. And that's how you let the beat build, bitch. I'm, if I, I'm about to play that shit. I'm about to play that shit, see how much I can remember, bro. Cause it's like, that's, cause I remember, bro, just on the mix, I'm talking about LimeWire days, downloading a little Wayne music and trying to memorize them songs. I, and I, I vividly remember this, bro, from my childhood. I was remember trying to memorize the Nucky If You Buck verse. And I just remember this nigga saying, I'm out standing like standing outside. Something, something, something. Bro, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play them shit so you can just remember like, how much of these songs can you, cause niggas going, cause you gonna get old right one day. You gonna get old right that one day and have these conversations with your kids and say, bro, this was that nigga, bro. Whose lyrics are you gonna be reciting years from now to your kids? It's gonna be some Wayne shit for me, bro. And, cause then, in our number four spot with Drake, Drake said some shit. What'd he say? Niggas use, niggas go to Drake songs for their Instagram captions. He was like, you can find some of my greatest quotes on the niggas' best Instagram pictures. He said that shit. Niggas sing my song, niggas say my shit like kumbaya, kumbaya. Come on, bro. Drake got some shit, bro. And well, oh, because then he had the same about the ghostwriter. Now, I guess that's a knock on, that's a knock on Drake. The ghostwriting shit, cause Wayne, you got Wayne who will sit there and tell you, bro, I don't write shit because I ain't got time. <laughs> Rain, Wayne will be on some shit. I don't write shit because I ain't got time. The shit so legendary. They bring out these old clips, bro. I just saw a clip. They said, they put a picture of Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne was trying to memorize his lyrics before he went to perform it. He was like, I don't write this shit. I just, you know what I'm saying? And I don't be knowing the shit that I just said. So he got to memorize his lyrics before he even go on stage. Like, damn, I said this shit? Bro, it's a, it's a clip of him. Like, it's a picture of him trying to memorize his lines before he perform, perform it. Because he don't write shit. Because I ain't got time. And then what he do? Drop a whole mixtape like that. And what you do? Ain't no verses. Ain't no, uh, ain't no hooks in this. It's just a what? It's a lighter flick. You hear that lighter flick, and you know what? You know Wayne about to go in. You know Wayne about to go in. So that's a knock on Drake because he kind of low key, he low key kind of admitted that he had a, a ghostwriter. Now the other shit about this, because Chris Brown said this shit, because Chris Brown, when Chris Brown talked about people writing for other people, he was like, yeah, but yeah, you can write the hardest shit, but who's gonna sing this shit? Like, whose voice is it that's gonna really say it? Like, it's some it's certain people. Yeah, they can say the bar, but when this person say it, it just sound better. So Chris Brown even admits like, yeah, this person can write it, but it's going to sound better when this person say it. And hey, Bailey. Hey, Bailey. So that's a slight, but that's another ode to Drake. Like, it's just his voice. Just his voice. Well, you know what I'm saying? Change some shit. So greatest rappers of all time, bro. If I had to, if if we had to just end this shit, right? Wayne is one, Kanye is two, Pac and Big is tied for three, and then Drake is four. Drake is four. You could end the conversation right there, bro. Like, and if you had to say on some shit, like, now everybody else, bro, is like, their shit don't change shit. Because then it's like, you got to talk about where does the trajectory of hip hop go from here? And... Who actually carried this shit from here to here, from here to here? What was happening? 
Now, in the mist, because it's like, are you gonna put future over any type of these old school niggas and this and the third? It really just kind of depends, bro. Like, it's like I said, um, it's certain niggas who do some shit and put people on it, you know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of shit that you can find now in this and the third, like, has this influence. So, but for Wayne, Wayne ran this shit. After Wayne runs this shit, you got Kanye. And Kanye had some times where it's Kanye who ran some shit and then put and then made niggas change the whole sounds of music. Cause, but even then, after you go off the shit, cause who had auto tune? T Pain. T Pain, T Pain introduced. Not, not, not even that he introduced it. Cause if you go back into like Computer Love, dun, 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 like you go back to some, there's some old songs that got auto tune. T Pain brought that shit back, and did you hear about people changing their voice? And there's certain people that can't even perform without them changing their voice. That they got to change the microphone so that their voice sounds different and how it sounds on the actual recording. So T Pain got a, a big T Pain has an influence. And the reason I keep mentioning Future, bro, cause that Future thought it was a drought, March Madness. That's a time that you go back to, like. I remember this time. It doesn't matter who you are. You remember this time. Because I just fucked your bitch in some Gucci flip flops. Hmm. I just made it. I just I got two bitches and I made them lip lock. Hmm. Bro, Feature got some shit, bro. He got a lot of shit, bro. And he now because I even respect his rock star shit, bro. All right. That's the song I put niggas on. I did my the first time I edited it and I put three of me in a the first time i edited it right and put three of me in a song i used that all right -na 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 all right who said it all right and i got that shit got a dope rock star beat oh because the and, and again me me mentioning that kanye's donda that jail that shit was epic bro Cause you talk about collaborations and bringing people in and bringing different parts and genres. That the when you listen to Jail, bro, listen to the one that got Marilyn Manson on it. It's so crazy and so seamless how he'll switch from his voice to Marilyn Manson voice. Shit, epic, bro. Shit, epic, bro. He got so crazy with it. You even know the. You know the cover of Donda? A black square. A black square. Now, it's technically 7.51, and they told me my book would be delivered by 8 o'clock. So I'm about to go check to see if my book was delivered. But greatest rappers of all time, we're going to end this debate. We're going to end this debate. Mount Rushmore of rappers. I'm sorry, my, my, my Mount Rush had my Mount Rushmore has five people. I don't I don't follow all these rules, right? I'm not following Mount Rushmore is usually four, but I'm going for five. I got Wayne at one, Kanye at two, Big and Pop, Top at number three, Drake at number four. I'm putting Drake over Jay-Z. Cause I know niggas is gonna try to, uh, niggas is gonna try to, uh, you know, discredit somebody's list when you don't mention certain people. But I'm mentioning these niggas. I, I give some respect to them. But Jay Z is not in my top five, bro. Jay Z is not in my top five. Again, keywords my. Because like, you gotta add some qualifiers. But even on some generic type of shit, I just kind of gave you a whole bunch of arguments. Jay Z is not in my top five. I respect this nigga though. Cause I had to go back to it. I remember going back to his old songs and this and that shit. And another part that make you really respect some nigga shit is like when you go back and be like, oh damn. It's like you will know a person's song. Like it's some Jay-Z got some shit. Feeling it. Feeling it. Feeling it. Jay-Z got some shit. Cause I go back to Jay Z's songs, and almost on all his albums, on most of his albums, his beginning albums, there was a couple songs I can. I'm like, damn, I know this song. 
I know this song. I know this song. This song is hard. Like he got some shit. Um, but I'm not going. He's not my top five. He there was never a time period where Jay Z was the king of something, and you said that he was running shit. Like I just told you, there was a time when Wayne was on either they played he was playing his song, he was on a verse or he was on a hook. That is a time period, bro. That's a time pillar. We taking over one C at a time. And Wayne used to come back on some shit and they would come at him. Like he kissed his dad. <laughs> Damn right, I kissed my daddy. But who was there when I saw the money? But who was there when I needed money? Just my daddy. So who be there when I see the money? Just my daddy. Hello, hip hop. I'm home. It's your daddy. When I say these, I mean, I mean these nuts. I don't not acorns and cat. Rip Ross tip, Sunner and Fat Joe, and I can't 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 get yeah, Briscoe. And yeah, I just squashed the bullshit. Which is it's a bakery here. Just trying to get dough. Shout out to my Jays, my Hayes and Chicos. And <laughs> Five. I'm the best rapper alive. Homeboy got a nine. Couldn't tell me this time. Homeboy got a lot of the But I can get to it. I can get up to it even if I was blind. Like a scary movie. Like a scary movie. Like a scary movie. Something Stephen King, even if I'm lying. Too bold, too cold, like Western alum. Me, me, it's all about me. If the girl got a boyfriend, she's talking about me, 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 he, he say, she say, we say this, da, da, da. bro. And me and T and Big Ronnie, da, 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 da. bro. You got too much shit, bro. Or maybe I'm in the sky swimming with the pigeons. Maybe I'm in the ocean. Maybe I'm in the ocean swimming with the pigeons. Or maybe I'm in the sky flying with the fishes. See, my word is different. Like Dwayne Wayne. And if you want trouble, bitch, I want the same thing. Wayne got too many bars. He got too many bars, bro. He got too many bars. So. That's my cigar talk episode. I'm mean, at least trying to mention other people. The rest of these people are like honorable mentions. You got you got to mention Jay Z. You got to mention Nas. I mentioned Eminem. I mentioned Future. We talked about Future. And this is off the top of the head. When you talk about niggas who was running shit, and you think about it from this time to this time, this time to this time, who was running shit? That's who was running shit, bro. Was running shit. Undeniably running it. Anybody I mentioned that's in my top four has a time period that people was running shit. Wayne has a time. Kanye has a time. Biggie and Pac have a time. Drake has a time. Now, some people only last for, you know what I'm saying, a summer or this on the third. Cause I kind of want to mention Fetty Wap, cause he had a summer, bro. He ran it. He had a different sound. That Trap King, seventeen thirty eight. Hey, I'm like, hey, what's up? Hello, my nigga. My nigga crush on the move a little more. Get nighttime. You know he get active in the nighttime. So yeah. All right, what we about to do now? They say my book should be here. It's seven fifty seven. I'm from the seven five seven. If niggas don't know what about that, that's from the Hampton. Norfolk, Newport News, Bad News, Portsmouth, P-Town, Chesapeake, Suffolk, and I'm missing one. Oh, Virginia Beach. 757. Something in the water. When you mention the 757, you're talking about Virginia. Who you gonna mention? Missy Elliott, Timberland. Missy Elliott, Timberland, Trey Songs. Our Virginia rappers, Pharrell, Pharrell from Virginia, Trey Songz from Virginia, Chris Brown from Virginia, Mr. Elliott, Timberland. And we can take a sip to that. I 
I'm sitting here, I feel something in it. I put that gummy in it. Hold on. That gummy been soaking in it the whole time. That shit stuck in there. I don't know how to get this gummy out. I knew that, bro. I knew it. I said, if I put this gummy in there, I'm not gonna be able to get it out. It's a waste of a gummy. Bro, I knocked my stuff over. I might check to see if my book is here. This has been another episode of Tension to Start Chat Show. I'm your chief, Jahar. And now we're about to go. I'll be right back on the live. I'm about to see if my book is here. If this not Amazon to lie to me again, bro. They done pushed the shit back so many times. It was supposed to deliver on April 3rd. Then they pushed it back to the 7th. Or well, they pushed it back to this on Saturday, but they didn't ship it out till Friday, Saturday. Now this shit, Sunday is still not here, so now it's supposed to be here.